Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining the Dumbo webinar. My name is Damon Gu. I'm the head of supply chain management for Dumbo Asia region. I've been with the company for 14 years, mainly focused on the supply chain management business. I had the pressure to take different operations, customer service, strategy, and the commercial roles in Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Copenhagen. I'm currently based in Hong Kong as the regional director for our supply chain management activities. I'm very excited today to host the webinar. The topic we are going to cover is China's e-commerce market, how to solve the logistic challenges. Let's have a quick look at the agenda points. I will quickly introduce Danco as a company before we share some latest e-commerce market developments in China. We will then talk about some of the challenges and opportunities for foreign brands and then we will share a success story from one of our customers with their supply chain solution to serve the China B2C market. We will have about 25 to 30 minutes to go through the presentation, and we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Now let's take a quick look at Danco. As one of the leading logistics companies in the world, Danco offers a full range of supply chain and logistics services. Our main focus is on our supply chain management, ocean, and air products, while we have a very strong heritage for supply chain development and key account management. We are very proud of the long-term relationship we developed with our customers over the years. As you can see from all the brand names here, we have a long history to serve the customers in the retail, lifestyle, and the technology verticals. And we continue to leverage on our expertise to help existing and new customers to optimize their supply chain performances. Danco has a strategic focus in the emerging logistics markets. Specifically for China, we have a very strong network of offices, warehouses, and gateway facilities, supported by more than 3,000 local staff. Now let's start with the most interesting part of the presentation. We have done a lot of research in connection with the e-commerce market development in China, and we would like to share some of the key findings with you today. I guess it's not a surprise to most of you that the global e-commerce market is expected to grow at a CAGA or compound annual growth ratio of 17% for the coming year. Again, you probably expected that Asia-Pacific region has a higher than average growth ratio. However, you may not realize that China as a relatively new e-commerce market already overtook the United States as the global number one in terms of market size back in 2015. Another interesting example is that China started an e-shopping festival on the 11th of November back in 2009 as an equivalent event of the Cyber Monday in the inner state. It was such a success that the single day event recorded a sales of 9.3 billion US dollars in 2014. So now we know China is the largest and fastest growing e-commerce market in the world. If we zoom into the market, you will find some really interesting dynamics and patterns. First of all, we know that the growth ratio of online shoppers in the rural area is much higher than the urban areas. Just for your information, in China people typically refer to mega cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen as tier one or two. And then the provincial capital with big population of several millions as tier three or four cities. Rural areas are really these inland towns and villages with much smaller population and less developed logistics infrastructure and internet connection. For these consumers in the rural areas, they rely more on the courier network to deliver the products as they don't typically enjoy the same convenience of nearby shopping stores or big centers. Secondly, it's quite obvious that the emerging middle class 
has a very strong focus and appetite for high quality products, typically with a foreign brand. As you can see from the chart on the right side, Hai Tao, the Chinese abbreviation for buying products from overseas via various online portals, has been an explosion over the past several years in terms of transaction value. Last but not least, the Chinese government is putting a lot of efforts to support the B2C market development. In line with the overall economic strategy to encourage consumption and make the future GDP growth more sustainable. We've been keeping a very close eye on the free trade zone development, import duty and tax policies, customs and system development, etc., to help our customs to take the best advantage of these support. It is important to mention, though, there are still a lot of uncertainties around these policies. While it is quite common to see some frequent regulation changes from central or local government. But we believe the aim is to further streamline the process, and we believe that the support will only get stronger to encourage more companies to join the B2C market and serve the Chinese consumers. After we talked about the B2C market in China, we would now like to discuss the challenges and opportunities for foreign brands, especially these ones who have not yet have a presence in China. Basically, there are two fundamental choices to make. The number one choice is you need to decide the sales channel with the key questions around how do you connect to your customers, what are the different options available for online platform, do you want to design and own your website, and what will be the potential market share for you to uh, gain. Number two, you need to decide the fulfillment model. So do you want to coordinate with multiple parties to get the best cost level, or do you want to find a trusted partner and outsource everything to them? Do you want to invest in the physical facility, and what level of visibility would allow you to control the full supply chain and the milestones? Obviously, there's no such standard answers to all these questions, so let's share a little bit more insight of the solution so that you can hopefully find your own choices. In terms of the sales channels, there are three main types in China today. The most popular is the online marketplaces offered by the Chinese e-commerce big players. Tmall, or one of the subsidiaries of the Alibaba company, is the undistributed market leader, followed by JD.com and other domestic companies who provides very good service in terms of system platform, marketing event support, and even big data analysis for consumer behavior patterns. Other than the Chinese B2C marketplaces, there are also international players competing in the same place, with more overseas brands to offer and international delivery services. The market share is relatively small, but the good news is they're still, they're still growing in the recent years. This also links back to our early discussion on the boom of the high tower. Last but not least, we have also so-called independent e-tail shops operated by the big names with very positive impact on their brand image, although their market share is still relatively small today. After talking about the sales channels, now look at the B2C fulfillment models. And there are basically two models to serve the different sales channels. On the left side, we have a very straightforward courier model. The brand products are stored in overseas warehouse and directly sent to the end consumers in China by international courier companies as soon as the order is received. It's easy to set up. You have good control of the stock in a single location, and you have the visibility of the order delivery status. But the flip side is the cost is relatively high with long transit time and no return logistics services available. On the right side, the products are imported to a distribution center in China, probably dedicated to the Chinese business. You can significantly reduce the transit time which is very important for the online consumers, while another big advantage 
is that you have the opportunity to choose the right pool of partners to cover the whole country and provide the return logistics services. The challenge for this import BC model is that you typically need to invest on the facilities and infrastructures. And you need to put the different pieces together in terms of milestone visibility by coordinating with multiple import, warehouse, courier companies, etc. So after sharing all of these different models of sales channels and fulfillment models, we would like to share a real life example from one of our customers who have successfully implemented a supply chain solution to serve the B2C market in China. The customer is from UK and they have a household brand. They used to have a very traditional import model to serve the B2B wholesale network in China, but with limited success. In order to serve the B2C market in China, they opened up an online store on the Tmall platform. With a very strong brand name and excellent marketing support from the platform, the sales quickly took over. And then the customer took a very critical review of the fulfillment model and decided to integrate all the different logistics elements into one solution so that they can have the end-to-end -end visibility of all the supply chain milestones as well as the performance levels of different service providers. As you can see from the slide, the new model enables the hub facility to serve both B2B and B2C channels. The operation process is also further streamlined to have daily fulfillment models seamlessly linked with the top courier companies in China with strong network coverage. And they guarantee the delivery even to the most remote rural area within four days. As a result, the customer enjoyed huge success with the single day festival in 2015. Within three days, more than 13,000 orders which have been picked, packed, and delivered to many happy online customers across the whole country. So to summarize all the key elements behind this success story, we believe there are four critical questions or considerations for you to develop your own B2C logistics solution in China. First of all, you need to get the end-to-end -end visibility to cover all the key milestones. Secondly, you need to have the right inbound model and location with the flexibility to maneuver in an ever-changing market. Thirdly, would you consider to leverage the same facility to support both B2B and B2C channels, or is it a bad idea to focus only one channel if you already have very good sales data? Finally, do you have the data integration capability to provide the real-time order status to the customers, and more importantly, to help yourself to do the performance management of your service providers and continuously improve the user experience? I think that's pretty much what we want to cover today in terms of the presentation material. We will now open the floor for questions. And please type in the chat box in your webinar tool, and we will try to answer this. Okay, we got the first question. The first question goes, is it very difficult to ensure reliable service levels when using such a fragmented distribution model that you just described? Um, my answer to that is, when you have one uh, service provider to uh, control the end-to-end -end supply chain, you obviously run with that risk. However, if you choose the right partner, I think it's actually uh, a benefit or it's an advantage because the, uh, the supply chain partner will help you to monitor the performance of the different 
uh, elements in the supply chain and also overall optimize that performance. Um, during our implementation for that the solution we just uh, mentioned, it is quite uh, smooth to integrate the different parts of the supply chain and provide this one-stop shop to the customer. So hopefully this answers your question. Uh, it is not an easy task to link all the pieces, but we believe it's better to provide this one-stop shop rather than ask the customer to handle four or five different service providers at the same time. We have one more question here. Um, the question goes, how are your systems connected to the large online shopping platforms? Do I need to set up separate EDI connection with you? Um, I think the answer is yes. Uh, we need to build the EDI link to get your PO and SKU data. While we already have existing data connectivity with most of the platforms or courier companies. So it is a prerequisite that we as the logistics service provider, you as the customer, and the B2C platforms are connected via our systems so that we can support the data and operation flow. Let's see if we have more questions here. I think that was the final question. Uh, we will reply any unanswered question via email after this webinar. And please note this webinar has been recorded and will be made available soon. I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for attending this webinar and I wish you a present day or evening. Thank you and bye-bye.